And now we'll go to the first round uh, to Mr. Brock. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and welcome back, uh, Minister. It's always a pleasure to, uh, to have you here and sharing your expertise. So I'd like to start off by asking you this question. I think you'd agree with me that, uh, in your opinion, Bill C-9 strikes the appropriate balance between maintaining the confidence of the public with respect to our judiciary and those of the complainant's interests. Do you agree with that? I definitely do agree with that. There are, first of all, there's more transparency to the system for the complainant, for, for the person who, uh, who, who files the initial complaint. There's a greater deal, there's a, there's a, a, a greater deal, a greater amount of, of, of lay participation in the system as well as a balanced amount of expert participation in the system, lawyers and judges. Um, and there's, a, there's very much a streamlined process so that for the complainant, they won't see all of these side appeals to the federal court on judicial, well, on judicial review, so not, not technically appeals, Thank but you know what I mean. Thank you, Minister. Okay. I have a limited amount of time. I have a lot Please. to get through. Um, I, you may or may not agree with me, but the, the public confidence in our judiciary has been shaken significantly as a result of some pretty controversial Supreme Court of Canada decisions. And with the time permitting, I want to touch upon two decisions, Bissonnette and Sharma. Because in my view, you need to know what the feeling is on the street, in the community. And I want to have your thoughts in terms of uh, the government response. So as we know, on, in the Bissonnette decision, the Supreme Court of Canada unanimously struck down 745.51 of the, uh, criminal, co sorry, of the uh, criminal code as violating Section 12 of the Charter, not saved by Section 1, and made it retroactive to the day it was enacted, in this case, 2011. We all know the facts of the case. We need not uh, uh, belabor the point. It was a horrendous crime that shook the conscience, not only of the Muslim community, but that across the country. In the ruling, the justices indicated that um, having a longer period of parole eligibility, in, in this case, upwards to 75 years, were degrading in nature and incompatible with human dignity because they deny offenders any possibility of reintegration into society, which presupposes def definitely and irreversibly that they lack the capacity to reform and re-enter society. Although Parliament has latitude to establish sentences whose severity expresses society's condemnation of the offense committed, it may not prescribe a sentence that deprives every offender uh, a, possi a realistic possibility of parole. I want, Minister, I want you to listen very carefully to the words we heard from uh, various victims when we studied the uh, government's response to victims of crime. One such uh, victim was Charlene Bosma. She indicated on May the 6th, 2013, her husband Tim was taken from their home, shot in his own truck across the road from our house, his body eventually taken to the Waterloo Airport and then burned in an animal incinerator. She spent eight days searching the province for him, not knowing where he was. On the eighth day, her world fell apart when she learned one of the most horrifying phrases in the English language. His body was burned beyond recognition. She says, I can't convey the overwhelming amount of joy and relief that we as a family shared in the courts determining consecutive life sentences in each, in each case, 75 years and 50 years for the co-accused for cold-blooded, heartless killing. As the mother of a little girl who was not quite two and a half when her father was murdered, I was extremely thankful that she would never ever have to face the monsters that killed her father for no reason other than they simply could. In May of this year, our government took away one of the very few things that we as victims had to hold on to, which was consecutive sentencing. And one of the greatest blows that the Canadian government has ever dealt to victims of violent crime, it says to us that you can kill as many people as you want here in Canada because sentencing will not change. It says that Canada only places values on the first victim with the lies of any other victims not mattering. Not here, not in Canada. We also heard from another family who indicated the profound impacts that this decision has had. I know that you have shown compassion uh, in the House of Commons, Minister, when the decision was released. Um, I'm looking at a news release from uh, one of the um, um, uh, publications on the internet, and in a media statement you had indicated as followings. 
uh, following. Our position was clear. We supported a sentencing judge's discretion to impose a longer period of parole ineligibility where appropriate. However, we will respect the court's decision and carefully review its implications and the path forward. Since hearing those words, and I remember you in the House using those words or similar words, what has the government done? What is the government doing to address the pain that these victims are feeling and the overall sense that this is no longer a justice system but merely a legal system? Unfortunately, uh, Mr. Lewin, you have 10 seconds to answer this. So uh, It's unfortunate. I'd, I would like to answer the question. Uh, I am... I'm open to ideas. Uh, we're studying that decision. We're trying to be compassionate uh, to victims. Note that the, the court does not, did not change the total sentence. The, 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 uh, the consecutive sentences still exist. The court did not strike that down. What they did do uh, unequivocally uh, was say that you needed to have a chance at parole at, at different stages in that process. They left the sentences, however, intact. Uh, it is as you pointed out, a 9 nothing decision. It's a clear decision by the Supreme Court. Uh, so it doesn't present an easy map forward, uh, but I'm open. Uh, we are studying the decision. We're studying ways to support victims, but we're also looking at the decision, and I'm open to good ideas. Thank you, uh, Mr. Lametti, and thank you, Mr. Brock.